Hey guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you today. I hope you've all been doing well and you're taking care of yourselves. So today's reading is going to be kind of a general energy check for love connections, romantic relationships. Um, we're going to be looking into how your person of interest feels about you, intentions they may have towards you, um, potential outcomes, etc. Uh, so we have four decks of cards here to choose from. One, two, three, and four. Deck number one is the good tarot, and we have this piece of fluorite with that one. Number two is the Sasha Fenton tarot with some bloodstone. Deck three is the wild unknown tarot with rose quartz. And deck number four is the tarot of pagan cats with amethyst. So while you guys are making your choices, um, I just want to say a couple of things. As usual, all of my links will be in the description box below. Um, Timestamps will be in the comment section, so if you already know what deck you want to go with, you can skip ahead if you want to. Um, I do offer personal readings. The information for that will be in the description um, and also in the pinned comment. You can go to either my website or my Etsy store to purchase a private reading or just to get more information about that. You can follow me on Instagram at Serpentine Daughter. The link will be below as well. I just want to thank you all for all of your continued support, your views, your likes. Um, all of it is so meaningful to me, and I'm really glad to have you guys uh, that I can count on supporting me every step of the way. Uh, these are kind of crazy times we're living in, and it's a little bit scary, but... I know we're all going to pull through as long as we stick together. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> if you know what deck you want to go with, we're going to move on. If you haven't chosen yet, go ahead and pause the video because we are going to get started here. So, group one. Okay. Group number one, the good tarot. Let's find out how your person is feeling, what their intentions are towards you, what they're thinking about your situation, and anything else that wants to show up here. Um, this is my first time using this particular deck uh, for a pick a card, so that's kind of exciting. The deck is kind of huge, as you can see, so it's um, a little bit of a struggle shuffling for me. I have kind of small hands, but um, I really enjoy this deck. I think the artwork is really beautiful and the energy is just so uplifting and happy and nice. Um, maybe not happy, but I don't know. It's nice and refreshing. Um, anyway, what is going on in group one's connection to their person of interest? Is too many cards. Whoa, did you guys see that? Holy shit. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We got a lot going on now. All right. Hmm. Let me grab maybe one or two Oracle cards as well. See if there's anything else that they want to add to this before we get started here. Okay.
All right. Okay, so group one, give me a second here to look over these cards. Um, <clears throat> okay. The first thing that I want to talk about here is um, right in the center of this spread, we have the moon card. And the moon, it's, it's kind of interesting because the moon generally relates to illusion, mystery, the unknown, um, that which is hidden. And it can also indicate like confusion and uncertainty. Um, so with this card showing up right in the center of your uh, reading, group one, I think that's kind of significant because it implies to me that there is perhaps some mystery in this situation that you're inquiring about with this particular person. Um, I get the sense that you are a little bit, uh, you're, you're feeling a little bit in the dark when it comes to, you know, what they're thinking, what's going on in their head, what they want from you. Uh, hence, I guess, why you're here. Um, it seems to me like your person also seems to be a little bit confused about what's going on because we have the two of air here showing up as like their thoughts pertaining to you and, and your situation together. Um, the two of air is about indecision and feeling like you're kind of locked in a stalemate, like you're not sure you know, how to move forward in a situation. Um, it can represent being unable to make a decision or in some cases unwilling to make a decision about something. Um, I do feel that your person that you're asking about uh, does have pretty strong feelings towards you. We have the Emperor card showing up here, first of all. Um, we also have the True Love card, which was one of your Oracle cards. Um, it says, this is a romance of a lifetime. To me, this is uh, one of the, like, life partner cards. Uh, it shows up a lot where, um, you know, there's there's a relationship going on that is, you know, it, it has what it takes to be very lasting and very loving and fulfilling and, you know, it has the potential to be like a real long-term partnership. Um, and the Emperor, the Emperor relates to stability, security, um, also authority and control. The Emperor is somebody who, you know, typically has everything um, under control. As far as feelings are concerned, um, I definitely do get a lot of attraction here. Uh, this is sort of passionate, um, I want to say excitable energy as well. The Emperor is not, uh, not a super emotional figure, but he is a very passionate figure. And um, he doesn't always let his feelings show a whole lot, you know. The Emperor is not the type of person who wears their heart on their sleeve, but that doesn't mean the Emperor doesn't feel things. You know what I'm saying? So the person you're asking about might be kind of like that. They could be someone who uh, sort of keeps their feelings under wraps, but deep down they are a very passionate person. They do have a lot of strong feelings about things. They just, you know, tend to keep their cool. They tend to uh, not be super expressive about their feelings. Um, but I definitely get the sense that this person is really, really um, attracted to you, very... I, I feel a real strong connection here. Um, the Religious Factors card. The card says your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. Um, in this case, actually in a lot of cases, this card talks to me about not so much actual, like, religious factors or things related to one's upbringing, but a lot of times this card represents to me, like, some sort of, uh, well, divine guidance, um, divine guidance, and I get the impression here that there is some sort of higher purpose to your connection with this person. Um, I keep hearing the word magnetism, like the two of you have, the two of you have been brought together for a reason. The two of you are kind of 
magnetizing one another. Um, we have the Page of Earth here, the Page of Air, as well as the Ace of Earth. Um, all three of these cards have uh, very new, fresh energy about them. Aces, in general, talk about new beginnings. Um, pages are the first of the court cards, so they tend to represent things that are new, that are just starting out, that haven't had a lot of opportunity to grow and develop yet. Um, I really feel with all of this energy of like newness that this is either a connection that is relatively new or it's something that just hasn't had many opportunities to develop beyond those initial stages. Do you know what I'm saying? Like maybe the two of you just haven't really had a chance to get to know each other uh, super well. You maybe haven't had a lot of opportunities to spend time together or have like real, you know, meaningful conversations. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to actually go ahead and pull out maybe a few more cards and see if I can't get any more insight into uh, what's going on here because, you know, like I was saying, this, this person we're talking about um, seems to have a lot of this emperor kind of energy. So, you know, I'm, I'm not getting a lot of, um, it, it's not like this person's feelings are just gushing out of them, overflowing. Uh, they honestly seem a little bit guarded. And so I'm kind of having a little bit of difficulty uh, really figuring out like, how they like truly truly feel um and and what they truly want from you and all of that um so we have the hierophant reversed showing up here um the hierophant in the reverse position let me put that over here the hierophant reversed usually relates to um unconventional or non-traditional types of things uh, which is interesting because it kind of implies to me that from your person's point of view, your connection is somewhat unconventional or non-traditional. Um, it could be that, I mean, I mean, this could be because of a number of things, but for some of you, it could be that you are perhaps quite different from others that they've been involved with in the past. Um, it could be that, you know, the two of you may be, um, you may have some sort of like, long distance thing going on, whereas in the past they've never, uh, they, they've never been involved with a long distance connection before, you know, something like that. Um, I just feel that there's something about this relationship that is different from others that your person has been involved in, and possibly from others that you've been involved in as well. Um, so there is a little bit of like reservation that I'm feeling pertaining to that. Uh, we also have the five of air and the eight of air reversed showing up here. So, um, okay. The five of air, this card relates to conflict, disappointment, defeat, um, struggle, disagreements. You know, this is a pretty heavy card and the eight of air, um, Typically, this is like isolation, withdrawal, feeling stuck, feeling trapped. It can represent self-limiting thoughts or beliefs in the reverse position, though. A lot of times it's about breaking out of that type of energy, you know, overcoming uh, a restricting belief or idea that you may have about yourself um, or just overcoming like the feeling of being stuck um, in a particular situation. So, okay, let's see. Hmm. We have here also the hanged man reversed on the bottom of the deck there, um, followed by the two of water reversed. Okay. So, um, all right, let me... Let me figure out how I want to explain this stuff. Um, I mean, okay. <laughs> I, I was mentioning that I was having a little bit of trouble uh, really getting a good grasp on your person's feelings towards you. I mean, with the true love card being here, this is kind of self-explanatory, you know? This pretty clearly implies that there, uh, there are a lot of deep feelings that your person has towards you. But, you know... <sighs> 
to, to just say that, you know, this person loves you, um, I, I feel like it would be kind of a disservice to, to simply leave it at that, because there's a lot more here than just love, and there's a lot more here than just attraction and, you know, romantic interest. Um, <clears throat> I do get the sense that your person has had issues with really opening up within this connection. Um, the Two of Water, this is the Two of Cups, which is about union and partnerships and unconditional unconditional love. Um, it's considered to be one of the soulmate cards. In the reverse, though, it usually implies that there's some sort of disconnect between two people, um, some sort of imbalance. Uh, two people may not be quite on the same page. Um, it can represent a dysfunctional or, you know, unhealthy relationship. Um, in this case, I just feel like your person has had some issues with, like, really embracing this connection. And the hanged man here reversed. This is about sacrifice, and it's also about changing perspectives, um, illumination, enlightenment. Uh, I feel... Also, I haven't even talked about this card yet, the Messenger of Water reversed. This card usually is about, like, emotions that are kind of out of control, someone feeling overwhelmed by their emotions, or emotions that are not well understood by the person who's experiencing them. So, all of this stuff kind of implies to me that your person that we're talking about here, um... They do have very deep feelings for you. They do have a lot of love for you. Um, but I get the sense that they are... It's like either they're not fully aware of those feelings, which is a little bit odd, or they're just not embracing those feelings. They're not, like, dwelling on them, trying to... It's like they're having trouble accepting the depth of their feelings for you. Hmm. And um, these three, uh, the, these two pages and this ace, you know, like I said, these cards relate to new beginnings, new fresh energy coming into a situation. Um, I get the impression that this person would like to have some sort of new beginning or fresh start. We have the transformation card coming up here. This is endings and new beginnings. Um, transition, change, cycles. Um, your person, yeah, your, your person, I feel, would like to move things forward with you, at least theoretically. Um, it's like they... They want a chance, they, they want to try to, it's like they want to try to give you what they know you deserve. Like, like, I feel as though your person has a good idea of what you are looking for from them. And I feel like deep down your person is wanting the same. Like... There's, uh, I mean, I mean, even though we do have these two pages, um, I, I don't really feel anything here to suggest that your person actually, you know, is, is satisfied with just, a, like, casual or fledgling relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like these cards are indicative of a desire to, you know, kind of, like, plant the seed and and help it grow, like nurture it, invest in this relationship so that it could become something more substantial with time. Do you guys, oh my god, <laughs> do you guys follow me? I'm sorry, I dropped, um, I dropped one of my boxes on the floor. Um, but do you, do you guys know what I'm saying? Um, this relationship, this connection, feels like it's still in like the early stages again either because it's new or because you just haven't had opportunities to take things further with this person um and i feel like they just they they want deep down like they really want to try to take things further to try to move things forward um 
and like open up a new chapter for the two of you together. But again, there's I feel like this person has some reservations pertaining to how do I want to say this? I mean, we have a lot of air energy showing up here. Eight of air, five of air, page of air, two of air. Um, which air relates to communication, intellect, logic, reason. You know, thinking with your head rather than your heart. And it implies to me that your person may be really overthinking this connection. Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I feel like they're thinking about it just too too much. And, and, and they're just, instead of just allowing themselves to embrace it and go with the flow and, you know, see where things lead, they're just getting stuck in their head about everything. Does that make sense? Hmm. And that is... You know, that overthinking, that, that anxiety, hesitance, that is really, that's blocking this relationship from going anywhere. I actually feel like a lot of you perhaps have um, been kind of waiting on this person to make some sort of move for a while now, and some of you are starting to get quite impatient. Uh, but in addition to all of that overthinking that I was just talking about, the, uh, let's see, the, the overthinking, it's coming from a couple of things I'm getting. Uh, first of all, going back to this moon card and this two of swords, or two of error in this deck, um, your person is struggling to make sense of their feelings for you. Um, and this messenger of water is talking about that as well. Your person is struggling to make sense of their feelings for you. I feel that their emotions pertaining to you, pertaining to this connection, again, are kind of intense. They're pretty deep. Um, and I feel like they've never really experienced anything like this before. And so it's kind of intimidating to them. It's kind of scary, you know? Um... That is a big part, I think, of what's holding them back. And that's, I feel like that's what they're really, that's what they're overthinking. They're like, what are these feelings that I'm feeling? What's, what's happening in, inside of me right now? What's happening? Um, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel so strongly about this person? Why do I feel so connected, so attached to this person? And I feel like your person kind of doesn't like that to some extent. Like they, like I said, it, it seems like it kind of scares them, that intensity. And the Hierophant reversed, uh, like we talked about a few minutes ago, um, that, that intensity could in itself be what makes this connection unusual for your person that you're asking about. Does that make sense? I just feel your person kind of fighting, kind of struggling within themselves. There's a lot of like inner conflict that they're experiencing related to basically, do I give in to this or do I not? Is this something that I should just throw myself into and give it my all? Or do I hold back and, and protect myself? Because, you know, really throwing yourself into a relationship and completely opening up with another person and connecting with another person on this level, it does, it does make you kind of vulnerable. It does sort of open you up to potentially getting hurt, you know, if the other person chose to do that. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying that you would ever want to 
intentionally hurt this person that we're asking about, but I feel like your person is a little bit fearful of that happening, possibly. Um, they could have, you know, some trust issues, some bad experiences, perhaps, from their past that's sort of contributing to this reluctance and this sort of guardedness that I'm feeling here. Um, but yeah, your person is just... Your person's really, I mean, this is kind of, honestly, this is kind of a straightforward message. Um, your person's really just kind of struggling to make sense of their own feelings towards you. Like I said, deep down, they have a lot of love for you. But it's like they won't allow themselves to just trust that. They won't allow themselves to just trust the love that they feel, to just trust the emotions they feel. To trust themselves. Hmm. Okay. Um, I want to see if I can't get a potential outcome for you guys. So we will pull one last Oracle card. Okay. We have let your friends help you. All right. So, um, it says ask for and accept help, uh, from others, support from others. As an outcome card, <laughs> this is not quite as specific as I was hoping, uh, but this is just a general reading, so, you know, we can't expect it to be too specific. <laughs> um, let your friends help you. As a potential outcome for this situation, I feel that your person may actually be talking to other people, friends of theirs, possibly family members, um, or for others of you, this person could be like praying about this situation or, you know, asking for help from like spirit guides if, if they're into that stuff. Um, but I just feel like your person is seeking help, seeking advice from outside sources about what they should do about this situation. And I do feel for the majority of you, your person ultimately will, you know, surrender to their feelings and surrender to this connection that they feel with you and uh, start making the effort to, you know, start fresh and, and move this relationship into a new phase, you know, to, to have a new beginning with you. I feel like for most of you, that is ultimately where this connection is headed. Um, but I do sense that there's, it, it's just going to take time for them to get there for most of you. I think for the majority of you who chose this group, there's still a lot of like thinking and figuring stuff out and prioritizing and all of that, that your person has to do before they're going to finally make this decision to just give in and embrace this connection. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, and I feel like whoever it is they're asking for help or whoever they're going to be asking for help is more than likely just going to say to them, what are you so afraid of? Why don't you just give it a shot? If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But if you don't make, you know, if, if you don't make the effort, if you don't give it a chance, then you'll never know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so um, that is what I'm getting as far as a potential outcome for you guys, group one. Um, I hope that this was interesting. I hope it resonated with you. And, um, you know, it's just general. So take what applies to you and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I am wishing you guys all the best, and I hope that I see you next time. Bye! All right, group two. Let's find out what's going on with your person of interest. How are they feeling about you? What are they thinking? What are their intentions towards you, if they have any? And we will also look into a potential outcome for your situation. Let's see. We have the Five of Pentacles reversed.
four of pentacles. Interesting. Knight of Cups. The Fool reversed. Six of Wands reversed. Hmm. And the Ace of Swords. Six of Cups, Five of Wands. Let's grab a couple of Oracle cards, see if there's anything they want to add to this. Keep an open mind. And playfulness. Okay. So, group number two. Give me a second here to look over these cards. Okay, this is kind of interesting. All right. So, group two, the first thing that I get with these cards is um, kind of a conflicted sort of energy. We have a lot of contradictory stuff here. Um, we have, like, the Five of Pentacles reversed, the Four of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, um, Six of Cups. All of these cards are relatively good cards to get when you're asking like how someone feels about you what are their intentions towards you all of these cards kind of imply to me that you know there there is loving energy here there is positivity here there is um some desire to see where this relationship could lead um you know give it a chance make the effort uh but we also have the six of wands reversed the five of wands the full reversed these cards are um, a little bit more non-committal, okay? Um, the full reversed usually is about fear, uncertainty, hesitation. It can represent being afraid to take a risk, to take a leap of faith on something. Um, the six of wands reversed can represent defeat, uh, failure, weakness, disappointment. The five of wands relates to... Uh, conflict, chaos, struggle, competition. Um, and your two oracle cards are keep an open mind and playfulness. So these are two more fairly non-committal kind of energies. Keep an open mind. This is kind of the energy of someone saying, well, you know, I'll see what happens who knows? And playfulness is kind of self-explanatory. This is very lighthearted sort of energy. Again, um, somebody just kind of trying to have a good time, trying to see what happens in a situation. Um, so whoever this is that you're asking about group two, um, it seems to me like they, it, it kind of feels like they maybe can't make their mind up about what they want from you. I mean, we definitely have attraction. We definitely have romantic interest. Um, again, with the Six of Cups as well, loving energy here. Uh, this, for some of you, I feel like this could actually be somebody from, like someone from your past, potentially. Either, I mean, maybe, like maybe an ex or somebody that you were involved with to some extent, or this could be like an old friend that you've reconnected with. I, I Just somebody from your past in some way or another. Um, for a lot of you, not necessarily for all of you, but for many of you. And uh, I just, it, it feels like this is someone who, while they are interested, uh, they do have feelings for you. They you know, they, they do, let's see, how do I want to say this? The Four of Pentacles here implies that they really do want to, um, like, stick to you. Like, usually this card is about, like, control, holding onto something very tightly. Uh, I feel... Sorry, guys. This is just kind of weird. Um, I feel like this person 
kind of has a hold on you. Like they're giving you they're they're giving you just enough to keep you coming back, to keep you sticking around, but they're not really giving you enough. Okay, does that make sense? I feel like you're looking for something more serious, more, you know, committed, dedicated, and this person is looking more to, you know, maybe keep their options open. I feel like this person is more interested in just kind of taking their time with things and seeing where, where it goes. You know what I'm saying? Let me pull a couple more cards here, see what else wants to come up. King of Cups. Yeah, like, Queen of Pentacles reversed. Wheel of Fortune. This card implies fluctuation. This is like going back and forth. Um, so that's kind of illustrating that, you know, flip-flop, in and out sort of energy that I was mentioning a few minutes ago contradictory. And we have death reversed. Okay. So, death. This card is about transformation, endings, new beginnings, change. In the reverse position, it's about resistance to change. It can indicate somebody trying to hold on to something, um, trying to just remain in place, remain where they are, like somebody really digging their heels in and refusing to move refusing to move forward, but also refusing to walk away or, you know, move backwards, whatever. Um, the King of Cups here, again, this is kind of building upon the Knight. The King is very similar, but the King is typically a, a more, you know, a more stable, more serious, committed version of the Knight. Um, so while the knight might have like an offer to make you, this usually isn't like long-term commitment material, the knights, uh, whereas the kings usually are. Um, so, and, and also the king of cups implies like real strong emotions between people, emotional bonds, attachments, um, deep feelings. And, you know, this card also relates to like emotional intelligence, emotional int uh, maturity, like, it, it seems like this person, it, it's not a question of this person being unsure of how they feel. It's not a question of that. It feels like this person knows how they feel about you. Like they know they really like you. They know they have a lot of interest in you. They know they care about you a lot. All of that. But for some reason, which I'm still trying to figure out, guys, for some reason, they can't make their mind up about what they want to do about it. It's like, it's almost like this person kind of, from what I can see, the feelings that I get, it's kind of like this person is living in their own world. Like they don't really understand what you're looking for, what you want from them. And even if you have tried to tell them what you want from them, I feel like it just isn't sinking in. Like, they're just not getting it. Um, I feel like you can't just imply things with this person. You can't drop hints with this person. You have to be straight up. You have to be very clear about what you're looking for, about what you want from them. Um, because, like I said, I just feel like this person is not getting it. They're holding on to you, you know, they're, they may be, it may be one of those situations where they're kind of giving you crumbs or it feels like they're just sort of giving you crumbs uh, to, to work with. But they're holding on to you, they're holding on to this connection, like they don't want to just walk away from it. Because I do feel that they, you know, they enjoy talking to you, they enjoy being around you. But they they just won't settle down. They just won't commit. And I feel like that's what most of you want from this person. You want 
something more serious, more solid, grounded, stable. And this person just is like not getting it. They're just, they're not, they're not giving you that. So like, as far as their intentions are concerned, I really don't see intentions here. Aside from just having a good time and trying to, you know, make the most out of your current situation ship, you know? Like I said with death, this person, this person seems to be quite happy with the way that things are between you now. They're not looking to make things any more intense, any more serious, but they're also not really looking to pull back either. And, you know, I, I don't feel like this person has bad intentions towards you. I don't feel like this person is malicious in any way, for, for most of you at least. I just feel like they're oblivious. I feel like they just have no clue that what they're doing, how they're treating you, all of that is actually kind of bothersome to you. And that you're you're not being fulfilled, you're not feeling satisfied with the state of your relationship to them. Um, I'm going to see if we can get like a potential outcome for this situation here. Because it seems to me like this person is thinking everything is just fine and dandy between the two of you. Let's see what we have. Let go of control issues and express your love. So, I think it's kind of interesting that we have two potential outcome cards showing up here. Let go of control issues. Allow the situation to unfold naturally. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Okay. This is, um, this is showing me two possibilities here. And it, the, the outcome is, is going to kind of be dependent partially on your choices, you know, what you decide to do in this situation. But also, honestly, I feel like it's kind of 50-50 here how they're going to respond. Um, first of all, what you need to do, those of you watching, is make it abundantly clear to this person what you're looking for from them what you want from them, what you want from the relationship. If you're not feeling satisfied by it, tell them that in no uncertain terms. Um, at that point, you know, once you've made clear to them what you really want them to do, what you really want from them, then they will have the choice to either let this connection go and just walk away and, you know, leave you to find someone who will be able to give you what you want, or they can make the decision to actually start making an effort in the relationship. And uh, honestly, unfortunately, like I said, it kind of feels like the possibility is like 50-50, like half of you watching this will get this, this outcome and the other half of you will get this outcome. Although I feel, honestly, I feel that even for those of you who, um, your person does make the choice to start, you know, trying to put effort into the connection, I'm still not sure that it's going to be enough because express your love, you know, this is not suggestive of like a real solid long-term relationship happening. This is really just about expressing yourself, opening up, you know, um, there's nothing here to really imply, like, a lot of, like, real long-term potential, unfortunately. So, like I said, even for those of you who your person does start making more of an effort, I'm still not sure that it's going to be quite enough. And I feel like you still may ultimately end up having this letting go outcome, okay? <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is getting, like real raspy. I've been talking too much. Um, so, uh, group two, I think I'm going to leave it at that. 
Uh, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this resonated with you guys. Um, this is just general, so take what applies to you and your situation and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. I'm sorry I couldn't give you guys better news, but it just seems like y'all are in kind of a difficult situation with this person and something's got to give, you know? It can't just continue as it has been because, you know, you, you deserve more than that, right? So, um, yeah, thank you for joining me today, guys. I hope I see you next time. Bye. Okay, group number three. Let's find out how your person is feeling about you, what their intentions are, and thoughts, potential outcome for your situation, etc. Um, I have a cough drop in my mouth because my voice really hurts because I've been talking, like doing readings all day. So um, I, apologize, I apologize for any unpleasant sounds that you might hear from me, but um, I don't really have a choice if I want to be able to keep talking. <laughs> How does group three's person feel about them? What are their thoughts, intentions, etc.? All right, we have the world card, first of all. Seven of Swords. Ace of Pentacles reversed. The Knight of Cups. Three of Pentacles reversed. Two of Pentacles. And Nine of Swords. And let me grab a couple of Oracle cards here. Let go of Control Issues and Codependency. Interesting. Okay. Group three, um, how's your person feeling about you? What are they thinking and what are their intentions? Um, group three, we've got some interesting stuff here. Uh, first of all, I do feel that the person you're thinking of definitely does seem to have pretty strong feelings towards you. We have the Knight of Cups here and we also have the World card. So the Knight of Cups is about, you know, romantic interest. Um, this is a pretty loving energy. A lot of times this card represents offers or messages of love being made. Um, the world card relates to completion, achievement, wholeness. Um, in, in the context of a person's feelings about you, this card actually suggests to me that the person in question uh, kind of sees you as like a dream come true, like their ideal partner. Um, like you have all the qualities that they are looking for in a person. Um, it sort of seems to me like this person may put you uh, a little bit like on a pedestal. They have this idealized vision of you in their mind, uh, which is very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be really real with you guys and say that this doesn't feel like the best relationship, the best connection, situation. And, and what I mean by that is we have a lot of energy here of like worry and stress and conflict. I mean, the Seven of Swords, this card can represent deception, betrayal. Um, it can indicate just some sort of sneaky behavior in general, not always, but I mean, that's the, the standard uh, interpretation of this card. And 
With the Nine of Swords also being here, which is about anxiety, stress, worry, overthinking things, as well as the Codependency card, um, you know, this is not real promising energy. Uh, also, the Two of Pentacles, this can represent fluctuation, um, uncertainty, some sort of imbalance. Uh, the Three of Pentacles is reversed, as well as the Ace of Pentacles. Um, the Ace of Pentacles in the reverse position can represent an offer or a new beginning that is fallen through somehow or that's been revoked. And um, the Three of Pentacles reversed can actually represent like cycles, repetitive patterns. Um, so I honestly, guys, I kind of get the impression that Whoever you're asking about, whoever you're thinking of, this could be a connection that is kind of toxic, kind of codependent um, in, in certain ways. And you may be wondering, you know, how do they feel about you because you're wanting to know maybe why they act the way that they do towards you. Um, and, you know, like I said, it seems to me like this person really does have true, genuine feelings towards you. Um, they're genuine, at least from their point of view. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mentioned idealization with the world card, and I kind of feel like this person might have a version of you that they've created in their mind that doesn't quite match uh, the real you. Like, it doesn't exactly reflect reality. Does that make sense? Like, they have this perfect, idealized version of you that they've made up in their head that exists in their mind that doesn't accurately reflect who you really are, right? We have the Knight of Wands here. The Knight of Wands is a very passionate kind of energy. It does have somewhat sexual undertones. Um, I feel for some of you, your relationship to this person could be pretty much... Mm -hmm. This is not going to apply for all of you who chose this group, but for some of you, I feel your relationship to this person is based pretty heavily on, you know, sex, physical intimacy, that kind of thing, uh, regardless of whether or not you've ever actually had sexual contact with this person, like, in, in real life, like in person. Um, it could be that, you know, your conversations kind of center around that, you know, something along those lines. Um, for others of you, this person could just be kind of, uh, you know, kind of non-committal, maybe a little bit of a player, someone who uh, doesn't really want to feel confined. Uh, and whatever the case, I get the sense that this person while they do have genuine feelings towards you, at the same time, they are, I mean, and, and this kind of reflects that Two of Pentacles energy, even though this person does seem to have, like, genuine feelings towards you, at the same time, they're not willing to let go of their freedom. Does that make sense? And, you know, that Two of Pentacles energy, it, it kind of reflects that back and forth, that inability to make their mind up. You know, do I want to be free? Do I want to just have no obligations? Or do I want to, uh, you know, remain within this connection and do all of that? Uh, it's like this person is trying to have the best of both worlds. They want to have their cake and eat it too. Um, the Five of Pentacles is reversed here. This implies that at the end of the day, this person does not really want to just let this connection go. I honestly feel like there may have been times where this person perhaps has like threatened to just leave, to just walk away. Um, but I don't feel that they've ever actually had any true intentions of really doing that. Um, this feels like it's... This just feels like it's not a great situation, and I feel like you know that. I feel like you already know that. Um, let me see if there's any other cards that want to come out here. I get the sense that some of you, like, really badly want to help this person. Like, you want to help this person be better, like... You, 
may have this feeling in your heart that, you know, this, this person is better than what they are acting like. Um, this person is, is better than what, how they're projecting themselves to be. Um, some of you may think that you can fix this person. Um, some people, I don't know, some people go into relationships like looking for a project, you know, um, that might be you, I don't know. But, um, I feel like a lot of you who picked this pile, to some extent you have this hope in your heart that things can get better, that this person eventually will finally, you know, settle down and, and give you what you're looking for and really, really make the effort with you. And, and maybe they've been telling you that they will do that. Um, maybe they've been telling you that they're trying, you know, but unfortunately, I just don't see that. I just don't see that they're being genuine there in that respect. I don't really see I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't see any intentions of actually walking away, cutting you off, anything like that, at least not permanently, but I also don't see any intentions to be better. I don't see any intentions to improve, to make more of an effort. We have the religious factors card. Um, for some of you, this could very well be a karmic relationship. That's a definite possibility. Karmic relationships do tend to be kind of difficult. They tend to be, they tend to be difficult because they're supposed to teach you something. They're supposed to teach you a karmic lesson, and um, they're meant to help us grow. And growth usually is kind of uncomfortable. Um, I want to see if I can't get like a potential outcome for this situation. Although I kind of, finances and career, okay, um, <sighs> sorry about this sun, it's like, it's coming in here like super bright, um, Anyway, guys, I, okay, this finances and career, um, this card does not always literally represent finances and career. A lot of times it represents just, you know, the mundane things in life, the day-to-day -day stuff, um, day-to-day -day distractions, that kind of thing. Um, what this card tells me is that your person... Your person has a lot of excuses. Your person has a lot of excuses. Either, you know, I'm too busy, I'm working too much, I have too much on my plate, um, things like that. And it seems like this person is always just kind of putting other stuff before you. And like I said, unfortunately, I don't see that changing, at least not anytime soon. And I think, I think what this card is saying, this is giving you some advice. What this card is saying is that it would be in your best interest to let this go. Um, you can't control this person, obviously, you know, you, you know this, but you can't control this person. You can't dictate their choices. You can't make them make you more of a priority. You know what I mean? That's up to them. It's their choice to invest in this relationship, to take it more seriously, to treat you well. Those are their decisions to make. And you can't make them make those choices. And I just... Uh, I feel like nothing you do at this point in time is going to change them. They have to figure out where they're fucking up. 
on their own. They have to face their own shitty behavior on their own. You can't fix this person. Nobody can fix this person except them. Hmm. And I feel like if you if you try to remain in this connection, if you try to stick it out with this person, I feel like you're just going to keep going around and around in circles. Just repeating the same thing over and over again, the same situations, the same arguments, the same disagreements, all of that. I want to I want to try to clarify something about their feelings towards you. I mentioned this person does seem to have genuine feelings. They are genuine from their point of view. They feel that they truly do love you. They feel that they truly do care about you and, you know, they have all of this fondness and affection towards you. And, you know, they I think for the most part they feel like they are putting you first. And they feel like for some of you, they've kind of, they've worn you down to be more of what they want you to be, more of what they need you to be, if that makes sense. I, I, I feel that this person has the capacity to be quite manipulative. And... I think for some of you, this connection has kind of caused you to lose sight of yourself, which actually could be more the, along the lines of what this world card was talking about when I mentioned that they have this, like, this version of you in their mind that doesn't accurately reflect who you really are. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I just see no intentions to make positive change on their part. And I feel that if you stick around with this person, you're just going to get worn down more and more. And I feel like ultimately, no matter what, something eventually you're going to have to step away from this connection. Like, even if it's not necessarily your choice, I feel like something is going to occur that's going to force you to pull back. Like, either they're going to end up cutting you off somehow, even though right now I don't see that they have intentions of doing that, or, you know, something's just going to come up in your life that's going to prevent you from, you know, continuing with this person. You know, something something like that. Um, group three, I'm really sorry. Uh, this was not quite what I was expecting. Um, not quite the type of message that I was expecting to get with this reading. Um, and I know that this probably is not easy for some of you to hear, but I, I do get the impression that some of you already suspected these things or you already knew these things and you were just looking for some confirmation before you make your final decisions. Um, and if that's the case, I hope that this did help. Um, and I hope that this resonated with you. Uh, if not, you know, don't worry about it. This is a general reading. So take what applies to you and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. If this did not sound like your situation, if this reading didn't feel right to you, then it wasn't meant for you to hear. Um, so, group three, that's what I have for you guys today. Um, I want to thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it, and I hope I see you guys next time. Bye! All right, and lastly is group number four. So group four, you guys have the Tarot of Pagan Cats. This is a mini deck. I really, I really like this. Um, there's something really satisfying to me about shuffling a tiny deck of cards. I don't know. So, group four, how does your person feel about you? What are their intentions? What are their thoughts? We've got the Eight of Pentacles showing up right off the bat. Knight of Cups. 
Eight of Swords reversed. There is kind of a glare on these cards. Sorry about that, guys. This afternoon sun comes so bright in here, and my window is like, it, it's a really high window, so like I can't reach it to cover it. Um, Four of Wands, so I apologize. Hopefully the lighting will fix itself, I don't know. Uh, Four of Wands, we have, hold on, hold on. Ace of Wands, Ten of Wands reversed, Ace of Pentacles, Nine of Cups. Okay, and I'm going to grab a couple Oracle cards, see if there's anything that they want to add to this. Engagement, finances, and career. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> so, group four, right away, I have to say that um, this reading is a lot better than some of the others that I have done today <laughs> in this video. Um, this looks promising. Okay. How does your person feel about you? Uh, we have the Four of Wands right here in the center of this spread. Uh, the Four of Wands is union, partnership, celebration. This is happiness and contentment, and it talks to me of unconditional love. And, you know, this card can represent marriage, weddings, and it's kind of interesting because we also have the engagement card showing up here, which obviously can represent actually getting engaged to be married, but it also can just represent, you know, um, a relationship going to the next level, um, whatever that might mean. So <clears throat> a lot of really good energy here. Nine of Cups, this is contentment, satisfaction, happiness, wish fulfillment as well. I get the sense that your person feels very satisfied within your relationship. I get the sense that there is a lot of love here and it's mutual. You know, I feel like this is balanced. Um, Ace of Pentacles and Ace of Wands. Aces in general talk about new beginnings, um, new, you know, new fresh energy coming in. They can also represent messages, offers being made. Um, the Ace of Pentacles in particular typically relates to, you know, stability. It can represent like a job offer, money. Um, but in the relationship context, it's more about commitment, stability, security, um, the beginning of a relationship that has the potential to be very stable. And the Ace of Wands is some sort of beginning that um, is exciting and, you know, something that you're going to, that you, that you feel passionate and enthusiastic about, okay? This is excitement. This is creativity. This is manifestation. Um, there's a lot of good feelings here. The Knight of Cups also, this is um, usually offers or expressions of love. Again, this is a very loving, gentle kind of energy. I really feel that the person you're thinking of has a ton, a ton of love for you. And it's coming through just so, so clearly. Um, the Eight of Pentacles is here as well. This was the very first card to come out. And I really like getting this card because it's about hard work. It's about putting forth the effort to achieve a particular goal. And, um, you know, in the relationship context, that might mean really investing in a relationship with another person, you know, really working hard, making the effort to make this something solid, make this something that will work long term, you know? Um, I, I really feel that your person is quite dedicated to your connection, and I really feel that they want to take things further. I really feel that they want to um, eventually, you know, reach that union stage, uh, whether it's actually getting married or just, you know, having that level of commitment. I feel like that's ultimately what your person is looking for. Um, also, the finances and career card. This uh, does not always literally represent finances and career for me. It can, in general, just be about, you know, the, mo the more mundane aspects of life, like the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, 
in this case, it's talking to me about like the ways that couples have to work as a team, you know, as far as keeping themselves afloat, helping one another in difficult times through difficult situations, um, you know, maintaining a home together, maintaining a family together if there becomes family involved, things like that. Um, so I really feel like your person not only has a lot of love for you and they not only have a lot of dedication to this relationship, but I feel like they also I feel like they also want to be like your partner in life. Like they want to work with you as a team, you know, and that's really, that's kind of critical in relationships. You know, if a relationship is going to last, you have to be able to work together as a team. Um, <clears throat> we also have here the 10 of wands reversed, the moon reversed and the eight of swords reversed. So the Ten of Wands in the reverse position, this card can represent letting go of burdens, letting go of something that's been weighing you down, something that's just um, kind of wearing on you, right? Responsibilities, obligations. Um, the Eight of Swords reversed usually represents breaking out of, breaking out of like a uh, anxiety, breaking out of a situation where you're overthinking things. It can be overcoming, you know, self-limiting thoughts, beliefs, or ideas that you may have about yourself. And the moon card reverse, this is really talking to me about gaining clarity and insight into something. Um, I feel like the person we're talking about here, um, prior to... Let's see, how do I want to say this? I feel like prior to the start of your relationship or prior to, you know, the beginning of your connection, this person may have felt kind of resigned when it came to relationships. Like they may have felt as though, they, they may have kind of felt like giving up. Like, I kind of get the sense that they they had begun to think that they just weren't ever going to find the right person for them. That maybe they just weren't meant to be happy in relationships. Maybe they weren't meant to fall in love, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe they weren't lovable. But then your connection changed that. Your connection helped them to see that that wasn't the case. Your connection helped them let go of those, you know, self-destructive thoughts, beliefs that they might have had about themselves. I want to grab one more of these cards. We have attraction. Let me get a uh, potential outcome here as well. wedding card jumps out for your potential outcome. I love that. And it's, it's super cool because we also have engagement. Oh my God. Guys, I love this. I love this. I'm glad we could end the today's reading on this note <laughs> because a couple of the others that we did today were, were, were not so promising. Um, but I love this. Your person loves you. This is the trajectory that your connection to them is on right now. This is what they want. This is their intention for you, for your relationship. Um, the two of you seem to really be enjoying one another and loving each other and working together well. And so, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing because it seems to be working. Um, <clears throat> this person is so happy to have you, so happy to have you in their life. Like they can't even, I feel like for some of you, you might be wondering how this person feels about you because they may not express it to you very much. And that's because they don't know how, like they don't know how to express the depth 
of these feelings and these thoughts that they have about you. And also for some of them, you know, they, they may, they may be a little bit averse to coming off as like real mushy, touchy feely, but there's so much genuine affection and, and love and tenderness here. And it's really beautiful and it feels so good. And I'm happy for you guys. So, um, I think I'm going to leave it at that. This is pretty straightforward guys. Uh, I hope this resonated with you. I hope that this gave you some insight into things. Um, this is just general, so, you know, take what applies to you and your situation and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I am wishing you guys all the best, and I hope that I see you next time. Bye!